Hello everyone, this is Tayo commenting on the long play for the computer game Nexus, played by myself for the Commodore 64 game video archive. Here we have the mission statement, find Tayo and free him. So now you know where I got my name from. And the guy we just saw in the picture could be Tayo, maybe he's not, actually I don't know. It's a bit of a mysterium because we will actually meet this guy during the game, but he's not willing to come with us, so it might be someone else. Now we have to confirm 32 rumors. These are actually the answers to 32 questions. Um, each rumor consists of four pieces, which are spread in a building of 250 rooms. So 128 pieces to be collected in this building. This is the headquarters of a drug ring that kidnapped our friend Tayo. And the first person we meet is Wendy. Here she comes. And she says, have you been here before? And of course I said yes, since I have played this computer game before. If you say no, then she will lead you to that lift, which moves down one level to level one. Wendy is a member of the Nexus team. Everyone dressed in green is a member of the team. And these guys snuck into the building and they are here to help us. Now, there are actually 10 people in that team and 9 of them have a special talent to help you. Here we meet the next member of the team. This is Clive asking us to follow him. And you can see this is made like, um, like an interactive action adventure. You meet people, you communicate with them and here he stops and he actually have to walk on a little until he says enter this room i'll be with you in a minute yeah let's enter the room and this is actually the first and only time that someone else but you enters a room usually you are safe in the rooms and he explains this blue terminal to us if you're looking for someone in particular access the blue terminal and you can find that person now he leaves and he tells us that the pass we have will last a while for all levels. I'll tell you more about that later. First let's get some equipment. First a camera located in this room. Here we have the camera and from the menu you can see there's an option called picture and you can take a picture of rooms and of people. There are 25 differently shaped rooms and 10 important people. And now we see we have photographed one person and one room, 10 points each. And here we have another blue terminal. And here we can see the how to use function. Well, basically you select the person you want to locate and then you pull the joystick down and press fire to locate the person. At each terminal, four persons are available four out of nine persons with a special talent and when you meet the person greet them and they will help you okay before we leave this level let's get some more equipment in this room we find five grenades there's also a gun available fortunately we already start with the gun so we don't have to collect this one and we just found something piece number three of room number 13 so that's one of 128 pieces. Level 1, where we are currently, is also called the hideout. In this area you don't need a pass, so all the guards, except the smart ones, will be friendly. And you can also do practice fights with the members of the Nexus team. But unfortunately this feature is not very well implemented, so no, you shouldn't try too often. Now we start our search in the in the eastern area of the building and there we're going to meet some regular guards. So far we've just met members of the Nexus team. Now the members of the Nexus team are here to help us, but in case they think we jeopardize them, the mission will be over. And this can happen anytime you go to jail. So when those guards beat you up, you can go to jail. Whenever you get knocked down, there's a certain probability for you to go to jail. And then when you wake up in jail, there's a certain probability that you actually that the mission is actually over. 
So now we are there in that eastern area and you see it looks just like on level 2 where we started. But there are actually runes. Oh, who is this? It's the guy we saw at the beginning. Let's greet him. And he says, I'm on the side of money. Well, whatever that means. Uh, and the next thing he says is, you're dead meat. Not very nice, actually. So, who is this guy? Is it our friend? Who just went over to the enemy? Or is it maybe the boss of that drug ring? Well, let's continue on level 3. Where we meet a god dressed in yellow, who is much more friendly. Actually, everyone dressed in black will always attack us. So these guys know that our pass is just a forgery. The colored gods do not know this, so they are always friendly if you have the correct pass color. Or at the beginning of the game, when the pass lasts for all levels. Now what about this pass? The pass is actually a pass color. And the current pass color can be seen left to that uh, message screen. All you can see here is a gray box. And once you get a new pass color, the box will change its color. It took me some time to find out what this pass color is about. Actually, the pass color has to match the color of the floor. So in this area, the floor is colored in orange. So we need the pass color orange. Now you might say that the pass color we currently have is gray. But actually the pass color you start with is orange. So apart from the guards dressed in black, no one will ever attack us in this area. Unfortunately, the Nexus members who are forgers cannot provide us with the color orange. They can only provide us with, with one of the first eight Commodore 64 colors, and orange is the ninth color in the Commodore 64 color system. So once we change our pass color, we will never get it back. That's why I started in this area, and I recommend to start in this area whenever you play this game, because you can search all rooms without getting into serious trouble here. Now, time to tell you a bit about the screen. Oh, at the top you see where the action is going on. Uh, below that is the message box, which is currently empty. Left to the message box is the pass color indicator, as I just explained. Right to the message box is the locator, these four arrows. And whenever we are outside a room, you can see one of those arrows flashing in red. Which means that our target, which is currently Paul, that are located on the first floor, is somewhere on the left part of the building. Below that is a blue screen with loads of grey and white bars. White bars are people, the grey bars are doors to rooms or lifts, and the black and the red bar are the borders of the visible area. Well, whenever you enter a room you see that this blue screen changes. It's only active when you are outside. Now the members of the Nexus team are always pacing up and down the corridors, so you can easily spot them. Here is one of them, and you can see he's walking while all the other guards are just standing around. Now this guy is called... I hmm, don't know how to pronounce his name. It's spelled Y-E-M-I, maybe Yimai. And he's the one who can tell you where a gun is located. So in case you go to jail and you lose your gun, you can ask him and he's going to tell you the position of a gun. He will usually lead you to the leftmost room on the seventh floor, but well, as soon as you know the building, you actually don't need this guy. And here you can see a little bug in this game. This is what appears in the message box right now is something that we have seen before at the very beginning. It's Clive explaining the function of the blue terminal to us. And this has nothing to do with the fact that he is currently around. This always happens as soon as you get to this particular area in the building. So, well, Nexus is a game full of bugs. I'll tell you more about those later. Um, 
Now I'll show you something you can do with the Nexus members. You can greet them. And when Clive reaches us, he will provide us with a new pass color. But we don't want a new pass color right now. We're happy with orange. But as soon as you run away, you see that he is following you. Unfortunately, if you do not have the right pass color, he's going to attack you. So you should only call a Nexus member and run away when you are in the correct area. And here you can see another moving bar. So there's another member of the Nexus team on the left. But first let's go down to level 3. And this is the only area in the whole game that can only be reached by one of those uh, goods lifts. All other areas can be reached by regular lifts. And you see this game is basically about entering rooms and searching. Here we found another piece. Piece number one. Now this was rumor 32 and then 23. And everyone's friendly because we have the right pass color, which is orange. And you might have realized that I used to run from right to left. This is, well, the reason for this is pretty simple. The exit of each room is on the left, so when you run from right to left, you don't have to turn around when you exit the room and save some time. You can actually, as you can see here, enter the next room directly without having to wait for that animation uh, with the door opening first. Okay, again, from right to left. And this goes rather quickly. Okay, this is the last room. In this area, there are actually just four different rooms. That's why I did not take any more pictures here. Now these goods lifts are sometimes a bit tricky to use. It takes a while till they actually take you with them. Okay, now it worked. You have to pull the joystick up and then simply wait in hope of the lift taking you with it. Now, let me tell you more about the screen and its elements. At the bottom you can see uh, those arrows and that person. Now the person actually shows what Jack would do if you pressed the fire button in addition to your current movement. So when you are walking it shows a running person and when you are running it shows a person doing a kick jump. So when you are running and you press the fire button it will do a kick jump. Okay, if you pull the joystick up, like now, you'll see the map of the building with a little flashing dot which is your position currently in the eastern part of the building. And when you press fire in addition, then you access the menu where you can check your score, where you can greet people, where you can select your weapon, take pictures, or restart the game. Unfortunately, when you restart the game, the pass color will not be reset. So once you've chosen a different pass color, you will restart with that pass color, and you will not have that advantage of being able to search this whole eastern area without getting into trouble. Now, on the bottom left and bottom right we see those photograph screens. Whenever you meet an important person, a photograph will show up, and you will see another figure below that screen that shows what the person is currently doing. Now these people you can see on those photographs are actually members of the team, software team, as far as I know. And there is actually a demo of this game available on a games collection called Game 70. And there you can see photographs of two guys who resemble pretty much the two programmers of the game, namely Paul Voicey and Tayo Olobo. And this is one of the reasons why I don't believe that um, the guy we met at the beginning is Tayo, but instead he's probably the boss of this drug ring. Okay, we're nearly finished with the eastern area. Well, actually, we are finished. And now it's time for some action. That's why I picked the stun gun here. Only stuns, does not kill. Well, if you play this game for real, you should go back to the hideout and store the rumors you've found so far, because if you go to jail, all rumors that are not stored yet will be taken off you 
and you have to find them again. Okay, now we're here in the yellow area, and as you can see, all the guards attack us. No one's nice, which is simply because we do not have the right pass color, which is yellow, which is because the color of the ground is yellow. Now, let's go to jail. Fortunately, no pass color is needed here, so all guards that are not dressed in black will be friendly. Now, time to tell you something about the weapons. As you just saw, I switched to the grenade, and now the arrows in the screen at the bottom are white. Unless Jack is running, then the arrows always turn green. Now there are three different modes. The unarmed mode, then the arrows at the bottom are red. Stun gun, in this case they are blue. And grenade, then they are white. Now of course you can always kick and punch people when you're running. As you can see you can do a kick jump. Okay, here's another Nexus member, Fiona. She can tell us the position of grenades in case we, are, we have run out of grenades. Let's take another picture. There are just two different rooms here in the prison, so just a few pictures to take. Well, you can always um, punch and kick. The main difference between a weapon is actually when you stand still. In case you're unarmed, then you will do a kick jump when you press the fire button. Or, if a guard is close, you will punch the guard in the face. If you select the stun gun, you will pull the gun once you press the fire button. If you press the fire button again, you will fire a bullet. And if you have the grenade, then you will throw a grenade by pressing the fire button. Now there are several advantages and disadvantages to those different kinds of weapons. If you are unarmed, well, you are most flexible, you can run, and during running or rolling on the floor or jumping, you can do a kick jump or slide on the floor or whatever. Disadvantage is you know, when you fight too much then you will be exhausted for a while and you will not be able to fight with your hands and feet. And another disadvantage is of course that your opponent has the same chances as you, so if he is faster than you then he will knock you down to the floor. And this is the cell you'll find yourself in when you get beaten up too often and you will be transported to exactly this cell and, well, in most cases you will be freed again but if the Nexus team thinks you jeopardize them, then the game is over. Now back to the weapons. The stun gun is very powerful. It will be very hard for your opponents to reach you when you're standing or kneeling there, firing the gun. And you actually have unlimited bullets, so you can shoot as long as you want. Disadvantage is that you cannot move while holding the gun. So as soon as you start moving, you'll put the gun away and you'll be more vulnerable again. Another disadvantage is, quite a big disadvantage, as soon as you pull the gun, Everyone that is in reach, that is on the same floor, will become hostile. Even members of the Nexus team. No one will accept this, that you stand there with your gun, so you will get into trouble. This is why I prefer to use the gun when I, when I am in an area where I have the wrong pass color, or if the alarm is already running then of course everyone is hostile, everyone attacks you and you have to defend yourself. The grenades are very easy to use, you just have to press the fire button and everyone who is moving will fall to the floor. Someone who is not moving will probably not fall. This is, don't know if it is a bug or something else. Fortunately you can only carry five grenades. So once you have used those five grenades you have to get new ones. A very big advantage of the grenades is that no one will become hostile. So the guards simply don't know 
why they just fell down to the floor. So with that weapon you can easily get rid of someone you don't like, Blackguard. And this is why I use this weapon in an area where I have the correct pass color, because I don't want to, I don't want everyone to become hostile. Blackguard will attack me anyway, and the grenade is the best weapon to get rid of those blackguards. Now I switch back to the stun gun, because unfortunately we haven't met the a Nexus member who can provide us with a new pass color. So, well here is one, Kath. But unfortunately we are already in trouble, so that was a bit late. And you see everyone's attacking, so it's not a problem, you can use the gun anyway. You won't change much. Okay. Ah, here is that guy again. Who is... Maybe Tayo, maybe not. Don't know. So now it's time to go back to the hideout and store the rumors we have found so far. As I told you, when you go to jail, you will lose all your rumors that you have not stored. And this is very, very annoying because you have to start all over again. Fortunately, not all of the doors will turn green again, only those that contain the rumors that were taken off you. Now in the hideout I have only searched one or two rooms, or maybe three or four, so now there's pretty much going on there, because whenever you search an area, whenever you have searched all rooms, the guards will disappear from that area, and they will move to other areas, which means that the other areas will be more crowded with guards. And you can see there are loads of white bars around here, indicating that there are quite a lot of guards in this area at the moment. And here we see someone dressed in black, saying looking for trouble boy. And by the way, here we have some guns, so if you go to jail and use your gun, you can get a new one here. Yes. And now, most of the guards have disappeared. This is another bug in the game. Obviously the computer, the Commodore 64, cannot handle that many people at the time. But to be on the safe side, you can search... Ah, oh, there are the black guys again. Yeah, to be on the safe side, you can search the whole hideout before you start in the eastern area. In that case, the whole hideout will be empty when you come back and no one can stop you from getting to the red terminal to store the rumors, because if a black guard uh, knocks you down and you go to jail, you will lose all your rumors. Okay, here's the red terminal, and simply push the joystick up to store the rumors, and then you can edit them. The first one is already given, rumor number one, and the question is the name of the army officer behind the operation. Well, that's this guy, General Alfredo. And as you can see, all the other rumors are pretty much incomplete, so we cannot complete any of them. And actually, you should not play around with any incomplete rumors. That's another bug in the game, because as soon as you start playing around with incomplete rumors, the pieces that are missing might move to a different level. This sounds pretty stupid, but it actually is true. So it could be that these rumors sort of disappear. And now you could see the use of the grenade. Everyone fell down to the floor. And I jumped onto that guard dressed in black. Made a somersault on that guard and it disappeared. Whenever you knock out someone, get him onto the floor, you can do a somersault on the person and the person will disappear for a while. The person will be repositioned in the building a little later. So, to get rid of someone, knock him on the floor and jump on him. Unfortunately, those black guards get up pretty quickly, so they don't lie around for a very long time. And still we haven't met anyone who could provide us with a new pass color because we are now in the western area of the building and here we have loads of different areas with different 
colors of the ground. Okay, now this black guard wouldn't care, even if we had the correct fast color, which is Zion here. He'd still not welcome us here. So let's move up to level 7. And hopefully we will find someone here. Okay, more trouble again. And who is this? This is Chris, by the way. And he is a forger, and he can provide us with a new pass color. And I picked Scion. Of course, all those guards will not suddenly become friendly again, because we are already in trouble. So we have to get out of this situation now. Takes a while for these lifts to come. Okay, again and again. Yes, there we go. And for some reason, I inserted sort of an interlude here. Because we are obviously not welcome in this purple area on level 5 here. Well, over there is Paul, the guy I located. The locator is currently pointing to the right, the red arrow, because he is right to us. And he is the information guy who can tell us the position of any piece. And I selected rumor 7, piece 4. Now the locator is pointing to the left. And unfortunately that piece is not located in the sign area, but on level 4, in the blue area. So we're going to get into trouble again. This is just to demonstrate um, Paul's special talent. And now the locator arrows are flashing white, which means we are at the right position. And here we have it, piece number 4 of rumor number 7. And as you can hear, the alarm has just gone off because we entered a room with the wrong pass color. So now everyone is uh, hostile, even the Nexus members. And the probability to go to jail if uh, someone knocks us down is pretty high now with the alarm running. The probability to go to jail is also higher when the guard dressed in black is around. Usually they just have to knock you down once or twice and then you go to jail. So let's go to level 3, the Cyan area. The alarm is switched off, but unfortunately it was still on for a moment. This is why that guy dressed in Cyan is running away. Okay, let's locate a new person. We have four different people to choose from, as always. And I picked Bill, another forger. And um, I picked this guy because I haven't taken a photo of him so far. I want to take photos of all ten important people. Right, so the alarm is off, but yeah, everyone's gone. Okay, there are just four doors in this area. Not much to do. The next, we're going to move back to level seven. This the other cyan area. There are actually three cyan areas. And that guy we can see on the left here, who is currently on level 5, is called Bode. And in contrast to the other members of the Nexus team, he behaves like all the other guards. So this means he does not pace up and down the corridors. Instead, he just stands around and when you meet him and you have the wrong pass color, he will attack you like all the other guards. But in contrast to the regular guards, you can still greet him and he will provide you with a new pass color. Or he will just follow you if you run away. Okay, now on level 7, searching all rooms in the sign area, which is not a big deal with the correct pass color. Now, Nexus is game. Well, I have to say that Nexus is a game with a great atmosphere. I've never seen a game like this, at least not for the Commodore 64. It's just a little bit too big for the Commodore 64. It seems the programmers wanted to put much more into it than it was ever possible. The manual says something about uh, a hospital, but you will not find a hospital in this game, and this guy we're looking for, Tayo, is 
well, non-existent, or maybe he is the guy who keeps attacking us. As I said, I don't know. And unfortunately, there are quite a lot of bugs in this game. Some very serious ones as well. Like, as I told you, when you play around with uh, incomplete rumors at the red terminal, um, these pieces that are missing might move to a different level, which is completely out of order. Okay, we need a new pass color now. This is Chris. Another forger. Because in the next area, on the right, the floor is red. Now on bridges you don't need a pass color. Even the alarm will be switched off if you move to a bridge. Okay, now let's greet Chris. And let's switch to red. Now the left area consists of two blocks. Unfortunately this guy is dressed in black. Let's wait until he attacks and fire a grenade and jump on him to finish it. This is piece one of rumor number one. Yep. As I said, the left area consists of two blocks. The left one is a bit larger than the right one. This is a very narrow block. You can already see the next bridge. And you might have realized that there are no lifts in this area, so it's a bit hard to approach. And actually, you cannot get to level 8 from here. Level 8 is the roof, and it cannot be reached in this part of the building. Well, actually, you have to edit the map of the building. So if you are using an emulator, you can edit the memory. And if you insert the value hexadecimal AE into address F153, a lift will appear on this floor and you can go up to level 8. For those of you who are interested. Okay, now I select purple, which is of course the raw pass color for this area, but I want to go to level 5. Okay, these guys are about to attack now. So, now they're gone. Another bug. Well, not a serious bug, actually. <laughs> now, let's move down to level 5, and you can see that um, you need quite a lot of pass colors here. Alright, the guy in green is bold. The one acting like every other guard. Fortunately, we have the correct pass color. But the black guard that just disappeared attacked us. Yeah, as you can see, you need quite a lot of pass colors in this area of the building. Um, there are two pass colors that are useless. These are green, because you will not find any area where you need a pass color green and white. There is a white area. This is Fiona, by the way. But there are no rooms in this white area, so you will never need pass color white. Now there are a few areas where you do not need a pass color at all. These are levels 1, 2 and 8. And the one is the hideout. Level 2 is just outside area without any rooms. And the same holds for level 8. This is the roof where there are no rooms either. Additionally, no pass color is required on level 5 in the prison and in that small outside area. On bridges, no pass color is required either. The only exception is um, the bridge that connects the two rightmost parts of level 6. Okay, at, at that blue terminal I haven't found the person I was looking for. So, just carry on searching. So far we have taken pictures of 8 important people. As I said, there are 10. So, 2 are missing. One of them is Wendy. And I think the other one is Bill. Okay, that kick jump was probably not really intended, because as you can see, that guard suddenly became hostile. Okay, let's get the cyan pass color again. 
there are three areas where, where you need cyan, two where you need red, two where you need yellow, three where you need black, one where you need blue and one where you need purple. Now in this area we have four rooms with uh, four blue terminals and you can, can locate everyone, every member of the Nexus team except both in this area. Okay. They're almost there. Okay, so there are just four doors in this area. So now we have to change the pass color again. Fortunately Clive is still here. And as soon as you have well activated one of the Nexus members, they just stand around and they will not move any longer. In contrast to Fiona, who is still pacing up and down. Okay, let's get blue now. So we are not allowed in this area, but we will take the lift down one level to level 4. We've already been there when we uh, got into trouble. Okay. Now everyone's friendly. Right. I told you about the bugs in this game, some rather serious ones. Um, the most serious bug of them all is that the game cannot be completed. Yeah, this comes a bit as a surprise, I guess. After 36, 37 minutes, it's a bit late to tell you this, that you cannot complete this game. At least not the, the Commodore 64 version. I never played the version for the ZX Spectrum, but I once played a French version for the Amstrad CPC, which can be completed. Unfortunately, this is not the case for the Commodore 64 version. Now before I tell you more about this, it's again time to get into trouble because we need the pass color red now but unfortunately there's no Nexus member around who can provide us with a new pass color and uh, ouch, this went wrong Well, there are just two rooms here so, well, it's possible to search them without the right pass color and hopefully without getting knocked down again. Okay, the alarm has just gone off again because we have the incorrect pass color. And you can see also this Nexus guy is trying to beat us up. Oops, knocked down again. Which is simply because uh, no one should know that they are here undercover, so they have to behave like regular guards whenever the alarm is on or when you pull the gun. Okay, now that we are on the bridge, the alarm is switched off again, and we can leave the level. Still have something to do on levels 6 and 7. And you see another bug here, you jump, open the door by pulling the joystick up, and then you can simply enter the lift without having to wait for it. Very convenient, especially when you are in trouble. Okay, now we are in a yellow area and we need another Nexus member. And this is Bill. Let's take a photo. Now we have taken photos of nine people. The locator arrows are flashing in white because we are at the same position as the person that we located. Okay, trouble again. No, somehow there were some invisible guards around here. So we can simply search this area now. And let's locate Wendy because we have not taken a photo of her so far, even though she's the first person we've met in the game. And there was another black guard. Okay. Well, about this bug that you cannot complete the game, at least not the Commodore 64 version. Those of you who've already played the game and uh, managed to search all the rooms will have found out that at 
the end, when you've searched all the rooms, you're still missing some pieces. And then, when you ask Paul to locate the missing pieces for you, he will lead you to a position where there is no door, no room, nothing. The reason for this, well, I don't know, it's probably some problem in the algorithm that distributes the pieces at the beginning, or whenever you restart the game. When you go to jail and the pieces you have not stored yet are redistributed throughout the building, then none of the pieces will disappear or be relocated at a position where there is no room, so this works fine. But at the beginning, whenever you start or restart the game, about, well, 5 to 15 pieces will be placed at positions where there is no room. It can be somewhere outside the building, can be on level 2 or 8, well, anywhere. You can try it yourself, start the game, locate Paul, and uh, ask him to locate piece 3 of rumor number 7 for you, and you will end up in the left area of level 7, so in this area, between two lifts, the locator arrows will flash in white, but since there is no room, you are not able to collect the piece. So, how was I able to record a long play for this game, since it is not possible to complete? Well, one option could be to try as often as possible until all rumors are spread in a way that uh, none of them is located at a position without a room. But I think I've played this game hundreds of times and it never worked. It was always like this. At least five pieces were missing at the end. So I actually had to edit the memory of the emulated Commodore 64. Sadly, it's the only way to complete this game. Yeah, but you have to help yourself in a way, and it took me until April 2006, so about four years ago, until I found out how to complete this game. Well, each rumor is stored with its horizontal and vertical position in the building. The vertical positions are stored in addresses D00 to D7F hexadecimal and uh, the horizontal positions are stored in C80 to CFF in the memory so if you know the map of the building where the rooms are located you can move the rumors by editing those uh, values in the memory. Now in this room you can see a door and some people have asked if there's something about this door. I can tell you there's nothing about it. It just looks like a door, but you cannot enter it or anything. It's just another room that looks strange. Maybe there was something planned like a special area as soon as you have completed the game or completed all rumors. Yeah, so I had to relocate some of the pieces to be able to complete this game. And that's how this long play works, so we will finish the game with 128 pieces found. Everything will work out fine, but you actually have to edit the memory of the emulated Commodore 64 to be able to complete it. I also have saved uh, the states with uh, the correct positions of the pieces for both the CCS64 and the VICE emulator to be able to complete this game. Another way to make this game completable would be to uh, edit the map of the building. The map of this building is stored in addresses F000 to F7FF beginning with level 8 and ending with level 1. And then you can simply add doors to rooms at those positions where unaccessible rumors are located. Okay, we've just finished level 7. The rest of level 7, the rightmost area, is only roof. 
so there's nothing to find there. And it's time to go back to the hideout, to level 1. What is missing is level 6. Fortunately, in most of the areas of level 6, the ground is black, so you only need one fast color for nearly the whole level. Only the leftmost area of level 6 is colored in yellow. So all we need to do is have to find another Nexus member to provide us with a new pass color. And then we can search the last part of the building. And this is the advantage if you do not search the whole hideout before. You might find another Nexus member down there. Last time we were in the hideout I told you that to be on the safe side you should search all the rooms because you could meet someone dressed in black. But on the other hand, you could also find a few Nexus members here to provide you with a new pass color. Now Paul cannot help us with that issue, but here is Boat again. Or maybe here he was, he just disappeared. And maybe you have realized that uh, the guards only stand outside rooms that contain a piece. Well, this does not hold at the beginning, but in the later phase of the game. So here, there's no guard, so the probability that there's no piece inside, well, as we can see, is pretty high. But it's of course not 100%. Okay, it's time to edit the rumors again, to store them. And this time we can complete a few of them, since we already have found about 100 pieces. And I will just read the corresponding questions to you from the manual. It's pretty simple, you'd simply shift the parts of the rumors left and right until you get the correct solution. 17. Where are the drugs stored in the USA? Tampa Bay. 15. Which country is used as a staging post? Cuba. 13. What is the name of the politician who fronts the US operation? Senator B. Plum. 12. How are the drugs disguised for shipment? In new coffee grounds. 11. What is the name of their commander? Dracus. 10. What is the name of the ring's elite guards? Jedi Prime. 9. Where does the ring train its personnel? Honduras. 8. How do the ring's leaders enter and exit the complex? On foot. Hm. 7. How many people are employed by the ring? 64. 6. Which communication frequency does the ring use? 95.8 5. What is the name of the construction company who built the complex? Colombian Gold Mining 4. What is the name of the chief scientist involved? Professor Baraklov So if that guy whose picture we saw at the beginning is not Tayo, it's probably their commander, Dracus. Now 23. There are rumors of torture. Can you confirm the methods used? And the answer is Barry Manilow. Pretty mean, isn't it? Barry Manilow using as a torture. 18. Are the drugs sent to other countries? No. So this rumor consists of two letters, but you still find four pieces. And as you can see now, we have completed 14 of the 32 rumors. Actually, we only have to confirm 31, since rumor number one is already given. The next step is to transmit the rumors. There's another terminal room with four, well, I think five black terminals in it. And uh, there we can transmit the rumors. Right, time to get a new pass color. And we pick black. Right. So, there are loads of blue terminals in the building, but only one red terminal to store the rumors. And only one room with uh, those black terminals to transmit them. And this room is located on level 6.
Okay, now we are in the rightmost area of level 6, and since there are quite a lot of people around, I decided to bypass them, like I did before when I went to level 8. Here, level 7 is already the roof, but in contrast to level 8, you need a pass color here. So in case you meet a guard here, you require the pass color yellow. Okay, let's go back to level 6 now. We're now in the rightmost area. And we are very close to the transmitter room. Which is, by the way, the only room we have not taken a photo of yet. It's this room, not the, le not the rightmost room. It's next one. This one. And here we see those five terminals. Let's take a picture first. Now we see 14 rumors complete, zero transmitted. Here's a piece to be found. And now we have transmitted 14 rumors. Checking out the score. 14 rumors transmitted, which is another 140 points. So you can get 100 points for taking pictures of all the people. 10 people, 10 points for each picture. Then 250 points for f taking photographs of all 25 differently shaped rooms. You get 1 point for each rumor you find, for each piece actually. You get 10 points for each complete rumor and 10 points for each rumor transmitted. You will never receive any score for rumor number 1. I mean, you find those 4 pieces for rumor number 1 and you will get 4 points. But you will never get 10 points for completing or transmitting rumor number one. I don't know why that is, but at the end of the game you will just have 31 complete rumors. And you can see that those guards are appearing and disappearing all the time. There's some black guard around, but he keeps on disappearing whenever he is approaching us. A bit strange. Yeah, which is simply because the density of guards is, of course, pretty high. As I told you before, um, the guards will leave the areas that are completely searched. So, as soon as there are just red doors in an area, the guards will soon disappear. On this bridge, by the way, you also need a pass color. You also need black. So, in case you get in trouble here, um, you cannot simply switch off the alarm by uh, running to that bridge. You have to get away to some other area. Now these three rooms are pretty important because all of them contain equipment. Here you find grenades, here you find a gun, and in the next room you'll find a camera. So in case you go to jail and you lose all your equipment, move up to level 6 and you will find all your equipment in those three rooms here. So I think I've told you most of the game, which you should know. I mean, there's just a few minor issues. Like, for instance, in uh, the memory I found something like the guards telling you not to run, but to walk through the corridors. For some reason that message never appears. It does actually appear on that uh, Amstrad CPC version I played. 
I don't know what it actually means because it's not that they attack you when you run. It just keeps saying this and uh, whenever the alarm goes off, our hero Jack sometimes says uh, I'm going to search for help. don't know what he means by that because the only thing you can do when the alarm goes off is to escape to an area where you don't need a pass color or where you already have the correct pass color. So now we're going back to the rumor editor, the red terminal, and we're going to complete the 17 remaining rumors. And again, I will read the questions to you. Right. There we are. Okay, let's continue <coughs> with 31. Where is the shipment being delivered? Key West. 30. Contact name for next shipment, El Dorado. 29. Time and date of next shipment, noon on April 4. 28. What is the level of monthly drugs production? 5% of US consumption. 27. Was the Miami police chief murdered by the ring? Direct orders of Alfredo. 26. Which security force has infiltrated the ring? Central Intelligence. 25. Name of rival newspaper investigating story? Washington Post. 24. Name of the Nexus member rumored to be double agent? Carlos Ferdinando. Unfortunately, there is no Carlos here. 22. How many prisoners does the ring hold? All prisoners executed. Strange answer to that. 21. Who supplies the ring with arms? Gaddafi. Hmm. 20. The ring makes money. What is it used for? Wine, women and so on. 19. Who finances the operation? The Mafia. 16. What transport is used to get the drugs into the USA? Powerboat. 14. What is the name of the US front operation? Surgical Corsets of New York. And them all here. 3. 
what is the name of the Colombian front organization? Colombian coffee export. 2. Where are the drugs produced? The Andean foothills. 32. Street value of next shipment. 4 million dollars. And that's it. We have completed 31 rumors. Rumor number 1 is not counted. So we can go back to level 6 and transmit the remaining 17 rumors. So all these questions and answers, they uh, imply a big story behind all this. I don't know what the programmers initially planned this game to be with all the story behind it, since it is basically about running around and uh, searching pieces and putting them together. Yeah, and it's a good thing that the video was sped up a little, because especially the lifts um, leading to the hideout to level 1 always take the time, as you can see here. Okay, let's move up to level 2, and then it's back to level 6. Now, it says in the manual that there are three ways to complete the game. The first one is to collect all the pieces, put them together and transmit them, transmit the completed rumors. That's what I did here. The second one is to find Tayo and escape with him. But as you have seen, this is not possible. Either Tayo has gone over to the enemy or he's just not here because we just met this guy dressed in black who says he's on the side of money and tries to beat us up. And the third way to complete the game, according to the manual, is to cause as much chaos as possible. Well, I don't know how to do that. I mean, running around and shooting everyone is probably causing chaos, but it's not helpful in order to complete the game. Well, I don't know what this is about. Probably it was another thing planned for the game. And now there are only green guards appearing, which is a coincidence. Could be colored guards as well. So only members of the Nexus are around here. And before I told you that the guards leave every area that you have searched, but since there is no area left with pieces, the guards cannot move to a different area, so, and as I said, it's a coincidence that there are only Nexus members around at the moment. Okay, let's enter the transmitter room once again. And this time it says 31 rumors transmitted, and it says get to the beach at the top, without any spaces in between. And you might wonder why I just fired a bullet here. Well, it was quite a while ago when the music was switched off, which happens when you do not uh, activate the alarm or fire any bullets for a long time. So the music repeats, repeats, and repeats, and suddenly it stops. And um, yeah, now it comes back. We have some music again for the glorious end of the game Nexus. There is actually a game called Nexus 2, but it's not a sequel to this game, it's just a crack of the game. A cracked version. And, uh, oh, now we meet some guards that are not part of the Nexus team. They are not dressed in green. Yeah, Nexus 2 is a cracked version of the game Nexus. And the main difference is that all guards are dressed in black, so, um, you can pick whatever pass color you want, um, but you will always be unwelcome and you will always be attacked by the guards, which makes the game very, very hard. The Nexus members will, of course, pace up and down the corridors and usually not attack you. All right, we are nearly there. There are also different language versions available for the Commodore 64. One in Spanish, one in German. Don't know if there's a French version available for the Commodore 64 as well. But 
all versions contain the same bugs actually, so cannot escape from them. Right, so we're back in the hideout and the last task is to get to the beach. Okay, so that's it from me. Thank you very much for listening. It's been more than an hour, quite a lot actually. Didn't think that there's so much to say about this game that it's enough for nearly 70 minutes. It's probably because I am, well, I've always been fascinated by this game, not to say obsessed with it. And finally, I was able to complete it and record a long play for it that you can now see, including the ending. Well, I want to thank Paul Voicy and Tayo Olovo for programming this great atmospheric game and everyone else who was involved. And thanks again to you for listening for the past, well, nearly 70 minutes. And there we are at the beach. This is the end of the game. A message shows up. You are an ace reporter. And that's it. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.